So I have here a Holzforma G395. Uh, everybody knows that I really like 395s in general, so I just had to get one of these just to see what they were like. A um, lot of complaints from people online that the pistons are not in good spec. There's too much piston to cylinder wall clearance. People are hearing a piston slap, and I'll tell you that it's true. I haven't even fired this this saw, not even gassed it, and this is just the wear on the skirt from the factory. So obviously there's there's some problem there. And so I had planned to already replace the piston before I even ran it. Um, I've run these pistons from Traverse City or Saw Salvage, Duke's Piston, the Molly coated ones. Um, they're a good standard aftermarket piston. They, they seem to hold up. A um, little fuzz lighter than a Meteor to begin with. So they, they're always good. So a little, little tech about pistons. Um, we always want to measure the piston down here on the piston skirt. About, they say like a quarter or so of the distance, but of the skirt, but you want to be right here in this region. Um, Cause that's where it's thickest. And if you use a micrometer, you'll, you'll notice, you'll see, you'll, you can feel around here. It's loose and it'll get a little bit tight right in that region. We want to go for that magnetic feel. And so the way we do this is we hold the piston in one hand, this thing in the other. I mean, you can put it flat and chase the piston around on the bench, trying to use the thimble. You know, like they tell you to do, which we get 2.244 4 that way. You know, we can do it by feel the way that everybody learns in a machine shop. Which is 2243. So a tenth difference. I took these measurements last night, so they're a little bit different. It was a different temperature, so everything's a few tenths different now today. But what's important is we're gonna take a measurement from here to here, and then we're also gonna take it from here to here on the side of the skirt because these pistons. while circular on the top, around up here, down on the skirt, they're more oval like this. And that's because traditionally you only want a piston riding on this center portion of the skirt because out here it can't do as much. It, it doesn't have, uh, it, it's on the curve and so it can't support it as well. With a two stroke, because we're going past the past the intake port on a piston ported two stroke. We're going past the intake port. And so we don't want all this oval. And that's why we're getting this, you know, like traditionally on your small block Chevy or something like that, you'd see a piston skirt design that comes down and they have like a cutout like this. And then here's the ring lands up here. And so that's because they only want it to ride right here. So they just chop off all this other piston skirt. It's not necessary, but we need it here because it needs to cover the intake port. And also we don't want to drop this intake or drop this into the intake port. So we want on a two stroke, at least the intake side to be more of a constant radius than this oval. And what we see with these whole form of pistons, when we measure, oh, another thing too, is they aren't exactly straight up and down this way, like here are the rings, they're actually tapered down like this. And that's because this top side gets all the heat and it's going to expand more than the bottom. Plus up here we have the rings to, to support it a little bit. So we want this, this to float a little bit more, less friction, that way it can expand more and not get snagged. 
But down here where there's less heat, because it's already had time to take the heat out of the piston through the cylinder wall, down here, we and plus it doesn't have all the... Up here you have all this crown in the middle that is going to expand this out. Down here we don't have all that, so it's not going to expand nearly as much. So down here is where we actually want the tighter tolerances. Up here we want less. And so this is known as like piston taper, basically. And from what I'm seeing, um, say this on this piston, this is the Duke piston, we have about nine tenths, so about a thousandths of of cross or oval, which is pretty good. It's it's pretty pretty round, and we have about five and a half five and a half thousandths of of taper. So that's the difference between here and here, or this is the difference between here and measuring out towards the skirt. On the whole form of piston, we have about four thousandths of taper, and we have two thousandths of that around. <clears throat> so on that, this side right here, or this, this area, is two thousandths wider than this. And that's causing this to tip down into the into there or get snagged in the intake port. Plus, it's also about 2,000 smaller overall. So I have my micrometer set up for the spec on this piston, which we know these are a decent piston. So we're gonna get that. And then I'll set up a bore gauge for it. So we'll just calibrate that. Back to the minimum function, check it out again. zeros. So when we want to measure the piston to cylinder wall clearance here, piston to bore clearance, we want to measure it in about three spots we can get on the intake to exhaust side. We can get at the top, right below the exhaust port, which is right above the intake port, and then right below the intake port. And we can get one side to side above the transfer ports. Um, anything we can also maybe sometimes get one over the transfer bridges, but usually that's pretty blown out anyway. The, I don't know, the hone always seems to blow that area out. Uh, no sense measuring down here, piston never rides there. So turn on the min function, get this thing centered up in the bore and we'll see what the piston, the cylinder wall clearance is. So we got about 18,000 or 18 tenths at the top for for the Duke piston and that would be about almost four thousandths for the farmer tech or the for the whole form of piston that comes in it let's just check some other spots here so this is right below the exhaust port we're 0.22 or 2.2 thousandths which is normal to get a little bit wider there the hone always blows out like i said and at the bottom they're usually a little tight i don't know why especially in aftermarket cylinders the the bottom always seems to relieve in let's do a across the way here and we're a little tight that way but it'll probably run in there, you guys didn't see the. This is the one that you really have to worry about being tight at the bottom. So we're about only a thousandths clearance at the bottom. So these cylinders are a little tight, but aftermarket cylinders always seem to relieve themselves after you heat cycle them a few times. Uh, 
just to show you the difference, here's the stock bore. We're 19 thousandths at the top today. Right below the exhaust port, above the intake port, 2.5. Bottom of the bore. So once again, they're always a little tight at the bottom, even on the stock cylinder, 1.6. Side to side above the transfers. Again, a little tight, 1.5. Rule of thumb on something like this, um, air-cooled engines, you want about, what is it? It's uh, about 0.9 to 1,000 times the bore diameter, which were 2.2-ish. So really we want about 1.8 to 2.2 thousandths of an inch um, clearance. So we're a little on the tight side with this, but this is also a molly coated piston. So that's going to wear off a little bit. Um, the, the, the coating is worth about five tenths or so of wear in. So we've seen that with the Duke piston, especially with the wear in and the molly, we're going to be right on the money. Um, these pistons are sloppy. They have terrible clearance, um, almost two times what, what should be recommended or what, what should be considered good clearance. Um, also noted, I, I did take a weight of both the, the farmer tech it, or the Hulse former is 106 versus the Duke piston at 98 grams. So it's a little fuzz lighter, it will run a little bit better. Um, with that said, everything points to they pretty much copied a worn out piston. When you when you look at the measurements from a good piston to this to this piston, it's it's typical what you'd see of a piston that's been worn. The the taper is worn out some. It's gotten more oval because it rides more on the side of the skirts. Um, and it's just, it wears more on these sides here because that's where the, this is where they expand more because the transfer bri or the bridges are here. So it actually, when this piston expands, it's going to expand more here and here than versus across the skirt. And so you get more wear here. So on a cold piston, that's going to measure smaller. So we have more oval than what's really needed. And so, like I said, it, all signs point so they just copied a, a worn out piston to begin with. 